Hey guys, Caitlin here. Uh, I know I haven't done a video in a while. It's I've been really busy. It's summertime and getting ready for the holidays. And um, but I decided that I would sit down and do a video about some of the things that I have, some of my very special witchy items, and a couple of books that have really helped me on my path. And I just wanted to share a couple things with you. Um, so hopefully it hopefully you guys like it uh, I'm going to start off with my um, really special tools that I have that I, I really connect with and you mo they mostly are on my altar so here they are um, the first thing I have is it was actually given to me it was the first um, gift that I received from, 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 from some very dear friends it was actually my first witchy item and I really love this and it's always on my altar always around and um, very special to me um, this pentacle and like I said given to me so by some very dear friends so the energy on this is just really nice and just it's she's very special to me and just gorgeous it has some tarnish because it's been used but very beautiful, um, very sacred. If I don't have it on my altar, I usually have it hanging on my wall. Very, very beautiful, very special to me. Um, second item, uh, Kevin actually gave this to me, this Yule, it was our first Yule together, and um, there's a funny story behind this. Um, we went to a metaphysical shop in a nearby town for, for Yule shopping and we wanted to get each other a present and we made it very obvious to each other that if we were going to get a present for each other we would tell the, tell the other person go to the other side of the store and buy a present and <clears throat> he did that with me I went to the op opposite side of the store and I was kind of just ignoring him and I guess he held this he put this in his coat pocket right next to his heart so that it would charge and with his heart energy and how much he loved me and cared about me and um, when he gave it to me a couple days later on Yule it practically it was it was so energized that it basically vibrated in my hand and I use this in, during my tarot readings I use her during all sorts of ritual and Right now she kind of represents the goddess on our altar because we don't have a goddess statue yet, but it's this beautiful amethyst um, angel, and she is just gorgeous. And I'm glad that it's nice out right now because the sun is just showing her off in her full glory, and she's, I charged her under the moon last night, so right now she's very excited about life right now, <laughs> and she is just this is my favorite piece just because of all the love that goes into it because I really like amethyst. Amethyst is all about opening the third eye and intuition and getting in touch with your crown chakra and so I really love her. <clears throat> Second item, Poe, I think you're going to love this because this is, I was really excited when I got this and I got it at a rock show and it's just, look at that. It's this beautiful selenite point, I think is what it is. And it's cool because the, per the person who was selling it to us told us that it's really good to have as a massaging wand because this is for massaging and the point is so the negative energy can go out, that is creating that blockage and that soreness can go out. I'm honestly thinking about using this as an athame. I don't know if you have any ideas, if anyone has any ideas, I've read about selenite being used as an athame and it's okay to use it it's just it, it, I haven't needed an athame at this point I've been using my finger to cast my circles so I if you guys have any ideas yay or nay please post them in the comments and finally I am a intermediate tarot reader I took it up when I in November Kevin Kevin bought me this deck and this deck is my go-to deck right now I haven't gotten any others I haven't really been drawn to any others the way I've been drawn to this one um, 
he took me to the, to the metaphysical shop that we got the, the, the Amethyst Angel at, and we, he told me, baby, just pick out a tarot deck, you know, whatever. And it's cool because in most of the shops, like, I don't get my tarot decks from Barnes & Noble and stuff like that just because I think that you can't touch the, you can touch the box, but you can't really touch the deck. And the cool thing about this shop that we went to is they had all sorts of different decks out that you could touch and look at the pi pictures, look at the imagery, and connect with it which was really cool, and this deck was really funny because it practically screamed at me. Like, I touched it, and I felt the connection, and I was like, mm, I don't know yet. And then I looked around the shop, and I kept coming back to this deck, and finally Kevin's like, I think you need to get this one. I think that's the one that you need to get. I think the goddess is telling you you need to get this one. And I said, all right. I, I got it, and I took it home, and I started working with it, and immediately the images just really worked with me and this is um, The Witch's Tarot by Ellen Dugan and this is a gorgeous gorgeous deck. I'm just going to pick out a couple images here that I really love in this deck. Oh where is it? Okay like this. The Queen of Cups. And this is not really showing it up very much. These are just really beautiful cards, really detailed, and I love the backs. These, and I mean, just, they're just so pretty. And I just, that's the Six of Pentacles. And as a witch, I, I, I resonate very much with any deck that is beautiful and that's just for me it's just I, I love beautiful imagery that speaks to me and I mean look at this this is the moon this represents in 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 um, some of the spreads it represents the dark the crone aspect of the goddess and this is actually Hecate and I just think these are just some of the most beautiful cards and they they speak to me in such a way that I, I, I need to either get another deck so that I can have my personal deck and the deck I do for clients, or I need to find another deck that speaks to me like this because this is, this deck is really good. And I think I'm going to do a huge, I'm going to do a review of this deck where I bring the book out and stuff and talk about the spreads. Um, but this is, I, this is always on my altar and just a wonderful deck. And those are my four really sacred altar items right now. Um, uh, now I also brought with me three books that, two of the books really helped me on my journey into um, Wicca and witchcraft and just the path of the goddess. And then the other book is a book I'm currently reading. It's a fiction book that, again, is kind of strengthened my bond with the goddess. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go through the books that help me along my path. And the first one, and I think every woman should have this book. It's it's so good. It's called uh, this is gonna do it backwards. It's called The Holy Book of Women's Mysteries by Susanna Budapest. And it it's all about feminist witchcraft and the divine feminine and it's it's, it's one of those books that not only makes me secure and confident in my path, but it also makes me very secure and confident in being a woman. And uh, Zuzana Budapest is one of my personal heroes in the pagan world, and she's just she's fantastic. I really recommend this book to everyone, every especially women. Women need to read that. It's really good. Uh, the second book... I just bought this a few months ago, and I've been <clears throat> devouring it. I've kind of seen it as kind of my year-in-a-day textbook, if, if there's such a thing. But it's my year-in-a-day book. Um, it's Christopher Penchak's The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, Magic, Meditation, and Psychic Development. And this is basically, as he puts it, um, probably the first thing that every witch should learn. You know, most, most um, books go into the Sabbaths, rituals, and things like that. And he thinks, and I actually agree with him, that people shouldn't start in on that until they are 
in tune with themselves mentally, psychically, um, spiritually, in the sense that they can unlock their magic. And um, it encourages journaling, working with meditation. This book is, it, it starts off with a basic history of witchcraft, like a huge chapter on the history of witchcraft and as he calls it, the family tree of witchcraft. And it, it's, and he has a really good mindset. And I've been highlighting this book like crazy, but this, the camera's not going to show you this very well, but it's kind of gives you all these different um, viewpoints on the fam family tree of witchcraft. And then it goes from there talking about how psychically you can do different things mentally your mind is your biggest magical tool and i fully agree with that and so he it's it just a great book it's it really really i could not stress this enough i think everyone needs to read this book it's so good. It's so good. and then finally the book that i currently am reading um i I've been wanting to read this book for a while, and finally I found it at a bookshop, and Kevin bought it for me, and it's huge. But I am a, I'm a King Arthur geek. I love Knights Around Table. And growing up Christian, Knights Around Table was something that I always thought was just based on Christianity. And then as I got older, I realized that there's a whole other can of worms. And that's where this book comes in. The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. This book... This is basically the story of King Arthur and the whole bag of worms, can of worms, sorry, whole can of worms from the women's perspectives. It starts out with Arthur's mom and Arthur's aunts, um, Arthur's mom, Igraine, and um, the future queen, um, his, gets, basically gets married to Uther Pendragon and has Arthur. And you find out a lot of stuff about Arthur's birth and how it was supposed to, and bringing the two faiths together. Christianity was becoming the new thing, and um, and Vivain, Arthur's aunt, also known as the Lady of the Lake, Lady of Avalon, the priestess of the goddess, as far as and as this book kind of puts it, the goddess incarnate. Um, and his other aunt Morgos, which I haven't really gotten that far yet, but it's also centered around his half sister Morgane. Um, who is Igraine's daughter by another guy, Gorlois, and um, it just, it's so full of beautiful imagery and goddess worship, and oh, uh, I get lost in this book, and I have it, and it's thick. Like, I'm only, like, this far into the book, and so I'm excited to get further into this book. I spent most of the full moon last night reading this, and it's really good, and I highly recommend it. Um, that's all I have right now, but I love, I, I'm so excited to share this stuff with you, and I'm hoping to do more of it, and get more into doing videos, because I have been really inspired lately, and to get involved, and connect with the YouTube Pagan community, and you guys are great. Poe, I just gotta say, your comments and everything have just been so great. And Willow, I love you, as always, you know this. We need to hang out and do a video together. We really do. Um, but Poe, your comments have been really great. It's been really great watching your videos. Your excitement has excited me on so many levels. And I'm just really happy for you, and I really just love you. And I, I have to say, I really do see you as a spiritual sister. And I send you blessings all the time. Um, anyway, I'm going to get on with my day. It's really sunny outside. It, I, it's, it's beautiful out. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and we've had five days of sun. And for us, that's that's huge. It's it's a huge deal. So um, have a great day and many blessings. <laughs>